This is an ornithopter. It's a machine that flies by flapping its wings. When people were still trying to figure out how to get something to fly, they thought, copy a bird. A bird flaps its wings and it flies, just like this. So why don't we have airplanes that fly by flapping their wings? It turns out that flapping wings is actually complicated mechanically. First of all, you have to tilt the wing when you go up so it doesn't take as much air and then turn it so you push more air on the downstroke. So flying like this would be kind of hard for an airplane and really hard to do on a large scale. So humans came up with this. Our propeller, our propeller catches the air, and if you spin it fast enough, it gives you lift. So if you orient it upwards like a helicopter, it will give you lift, or if you orient it this way, it will give you thrust just like an airplane. So that begs the question, why don't birds and insects use propellers to fly? Turns out, though, that rotating a propeller is really hard to do with something that has muscles and tendons, so in the end, Birds fly by flapping their wings, and humans first learn to fly by rotating a propeller. Science. Lisa and I are air surfing. We've tried two different versions of tumble wings, but now Lisa has a new design, one that doesn't spin as it flies. Okay, so what do you have now? Oh, check this out, Bill. This is a mosquito glider. All right, so it's like a paper airplane. Yeah, but it's not made of paper. It's made of a light foam. Ooh. The mosquito gliders work the same way as the tumble wings, but because they're much larger, they're much harder to control. I got it. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, almost into the stuff. Not bad, though, right? You got it. Uh, this is very tiring. This is really hard. It takes a lot of flying time to master. We got the hang of it, but we quickly learned that you have to run a lot faster with the gliders. And we were soon out of breath. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, you gotta be in good shape for this. Turns out a bigger glider is much harder to fly. So, ultra maxed out <laughs> mosquito glider. We made it even bigger. Why? Well, because it's science max. Bigger board. We needed a much larger board and tried first with two people. Ready? Going. Oh. And then with one. And the most we were able to get it to fly was <laughs> not a lot. Oh, no. Our conclusion? Large airplanes just don't fly very well. Well, homemade ones. But we can we can try something else. Okay. Let's try something else. Let's try something else. This is an egg. It's been hard boiled and peeled, so there's no shell on it. This is a flask, and this is hot water. I pour the hot water into the flask, which means the air inside the flask starts to heat up. And when it heats up, it expands, and some escapes through the top of the bottle. I pour the water out, and then I cap the flask with the egg. Now this expanded air is starting to cool again, which means it's lower pressure, which means the higher pressure on the outside of the flask pushes the egg in. Ha <laughs> ha! Fun! And then, to get the egg out, he... hmm. Ah, I can reverse it. If I blow into the flask, I can increase the pressure inside. Ah, <laughs> science. And now let's max it out. Max out container. Okay, pour out the water. Oh, careful, careful. And now, I put this water balloon on the top, and we'll just see what happens. The hot, expanded air inside the container is cooling and reducing in pressure, which means the higher pressure outside the container... It's happening! ...pushes the balloon in. It's happening! Oh. Success! <laughs> Maxed out! <laughs> Hmm. This is a vacuum chamber. It's an airtight container, and I put a hose on it, and the hose is attached to a pump. Now, the pump takes the air out of the chamber, creating a vacuum. So, let's have some fun putting things in a vacuum chamber.
marshmallows in a vacuum chamber. The marshmallows grow larger. Whoa! Then shrink much smaller when returned to normal pressure. <laughs> Why? Well, take a look at what happens with this balloon. The vacuum takes the air and the pressure out of the container, which was pushing against the sides of the balloon. Without that outside pressure, the air molecules inside the balloon can expand. So let's max it out with maxed out marshmallow. Just like the balloon, the marshmallows expand. But unlike the balloon, the air in the marshmallows escapes. So they shrink when the pressure is added back in. They're almost the size of regular marshmallows. It's the air inside a marshmallow that makes it fluffy. It is not very fluffy. The same expanding process happens with marshmallow cookies. <laughs> the marshmallow has completely deflated and it's all kind of hollow inside. The frosting on a cake? More cake! No, no! Mmm, oh. look at this giant birthday cake. I can't wait to eat it. No! No! Why birthday cake? And even shaving cream. <laughs> no! Oh, shaving slime! Max Historica. This is Leonardo da Vinci. Ciao. One of the greatest inventors to ever live. And this is a pile of wood. One of the greatest piles of wood to ever be piled. Now, Leonardo is going to construct a bridge out of this wood. This is Leonardo's hammer. One of the worst hammers in the history of hammers. Now, Leonardo must construct his bridge using no tools at all. No, that hasn't been invented yet. How will Leonardo construct a bridge using no tools at all? Well, he is one of the greatest scientific minds. <laughs> oh, um, one of the greatest scientific minds in history. <sighs> oh, each piece of wood is supported by another. And that's what's known as Leonardo da Vinci's self-supporting bridge. Leonardo's done it! But there is a flaw in the bridge. It's very strong when you apply downward force, but not so strong when you push on it sideways. Fortunately, Leonardo can devote his great mind to figuring out how to clean up his workshop. Ha-ha! <laughs> Join me, one of the greatest narrators in the history of narration, next time on More Max Historica. Newton's first law in 60 seconds. Newton's first law says an object in motion tends to stay in motion. So why don't they? See, if I was to throw this, it doesn't stay in motion, it doesn't keep going, it slows down and falls to the ground. Well, the whole law states an object in motion tends to stay in motion until an external force acts upon it. So what forces are acting upon this? Well, gravity for one, pulling it down towards the ground, and friction, specifically air friction, slowing this down and making it stop. Now, if you were to have something very light with a lot of surface area, it would really be affected by air friction. You wouldn't be able to throw it very far at all, no matter how hard you tried. So there you go. Newton's first law, an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless it's affected by an external force such as friction, like air friction. So there you go. Sarah and I have recorded a lot of results on our ramp by raising it till we started to slide. Here we go! Now we've decided to raise the ramp to the highest point and see how far we can go using some low friction things, like a wheeled cart. I've made a double bike cart. Wheels are great for moving. They have rolling friction. Ready? Which is different from sliding friction. <laughs> through all those 
those boxes back there. That was it. We went really far. Total fun. Let's try something else. So what are we going to do next? Now we're going to do the frictionless this thing that we have at Science Max headquarters, a hoverness. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Where did you get it? Built it, season one. Amazing. As you may remember from that episode, a hover disc uses air to greatly reduce the friction with the ground. Here we go. So what would a hover disc do on a ramp? Right. Only one way to find out. Right. Let's recap. Friction is when two surfaces rub against each other. You can have a very small amount of friction or a very large amount, depending on the materials. And using science to reduce friction results in the best sledding experiences.